This video shows you how the Boston Celtics dominantly bounce back. Despite missing the Defensive Player of the Year in Marcus Smart with a bruised thigh, the C's made up for their lackadaisical effort in Game 1 by holding the Bucks to 86 points in Game 2, proving their defense is extremely intimidating even when they don't have their DPOY. Ime Udoka's ball club got back to the ball movement and execution which led them to the greatest midseason turnaround of all time. Give credit to Milwaukee for turning up their defense in the second half, but the Jays responded down the stretch with calm, cool, and collectedness. A spinning attack from Jalen and two corner daggers from Jason put Game 2 out of reach. But maybe the MVP of the night came off the bench, as Grant Williams had the game of his life, knocking down six three-pointers, posting a game high in plus-minus, all while helping Al Horford to slow down the reigning Finals MVP. Williams combined with Tatum and Brown for 80 points, as the Batman continues to prove himself as Boston's most reliable role player. But how much did Game 2 change the personality of this series? Stay tuned for all that and much more. Right before that, just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Following an extremely underwhelming performance to open the series, Boston brought a completely different level of attention to detail in Game 2 and blitzed Milwaukee in the first half. Conversely, in Game 1 on Sunday afternoon, the Celtics played extremely sloppy, and one of the biggest unfamiliarities was Jalen Brown shooting 4 for 13 from the field. However, Tuesday night was a completely different story, as he scored 25 of his 30 points in the first half, which was one of the driving factors behind Boston taking down the Bucks to even this Eastern Conference semifinal showdown at one game apiece. JB made 9 of his 10 shots in the first half, going 5 for 5 from the 3 point line, and whether it was snatching Grayson Allen or Giannis's ankles, then hitting extremely contested shots, or making unstoppably quick drives off the dribble, the all-star caliber wing Jalen Brown has every weapon in his bag. Boston needs him to stay consistent, of course, but the best part about Brown, other than the fact that he's the most talented second option in the NBA, is the fact that he provides leadership to the 14 other guys on the roster, which is huge that one of this team's best players has that type of voice and command in the locker room. After giving up home court advantage and then evening up this series in game two, Jalen spoke on the C's mentality with the TNT guys. One game, we can't, can't win late. one game to find our season. We've been resilient all year. Uh, playoffs is all about how you respond. Um, so we came out, and um, the first game we got punched in the mouth. We came back, we threw the first punch tonight, and we won. While Brown tweaked his hamstring, he downplayed the injury post game by saying, It's the playoffs, that's it, survival of the fittest. Also, Jason Tatum broke down the team's mindset to bounce back, saying, We were pissed off in how we played last game from top to bottom. We just knew we had to play better. The biggest tactical adjustment from C's head coach Ime Udoka was putting Grant Williams and Al Horford on Giannis Adetokounmpo after Tatum saw a lot of time on the Greek Freak in Game 1. This gave Tatum a lot more energy to create plays for his teammates offensively, while giving Giannis a much more physically imposing matchup to try and do business on. When guarded by Horford in two games so far, Giannis has shot 6 for 22 from the field, only 27.3%. He's gone just 1 of 4 from 3 point range, while posting just 3 assists and giving away 5 turnovers. Meanwhile, Giannis shot 14 for 30, which is 47%, when guarded by somebody else over the first two games. Having said that, we have to give credit to the Batman for being all up in Giannis's grill, and the Celts were collectively out for vengeance on the Greek freak after his triple double in the series opener. Udoka's game plan to crowd the paint worked out absolutely perfect. Boston limited Giannis to 11 for 28 shooting from the field, with most of his production coming in quarter number three. Anything Adetokounmpo got, he had to work extremely hard for, but if you're looking at this from Milwaukee's perspective, the bottom line is, Drew Holiday and Brooke Lopez have to give their top player a hell of a lot more support and open up much more space for Giannis if the Bucks have any chance against this seemingly generationally great Celtics defense. On the other side, Boston was playing on a string and trusting each other beautifully in Game 2. They racked up 28 assists as a team, and that was one of the reasons why the team converted a playoff franchise record of 23 pointers made. Milwaukee versus Boston is shaping up to be an outstanding series despite both teams missing top pieces to their attack. 
The Bucks are without Chris Middleton, and the Celtics just lost Marcus Smart to a thigh contusion. As we looked at in this video two days ago, snipers like Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton, and Bobby Portis stepped up nicely in the absence of Middleton. Conversely, Game 2 saw the Celtic role players help make up for the defensive impact of the anchor on that end of the floor in Marcus Smart, specifically Grant and Robert Williams, who made exceptional rotations and hustle plays all night long. The Time Lord gets his respect as being a clampdown artist, but Batman is a heavily underrated perimeter stopper. Grant Williams proved his defensive chops against Kevin Durant in the first round, and now he's showing off those same defensive clamps against Giannis. However, it was how Batman relieved the pressure off Boston's two top weapons offensively, which made the biggest difference in Game 2. So far in 2022's playoffs, for a team that resembles a top title threat, Grant Williams has been the most locked-in role player in the NBA, as the stretch power forwards 11 points per game goes along with unheard of shooting splits for a supporting cast member of 50% from the field, 50% from deep, and 90% from the charity stripe. Considering Williams scored 21 points on 7 of 14 shooting from the field and 6 of 9 from 3 point range in game 2, marking the highest scoring game of his NBA career, including the regular season, now we all understand why he named himself the Batman, the guy saved the day. Topping off the list of crucial Game 2 contributors, Jason Tatum had 19 points while dishing out a crucial 8 assists. It wasn't the flashy scoring night from Tatum that fans expect, but he showed up when it matters most, with two triples over the final five minutes, and you can give a majority of the credit to Jason's facilitating for Boston's offensive flow. The glue guy without smart in Big Al Horford had 14 points and 11 rebounds, and while Derek White didn't score a single point, he was tied with Grant Williams as a game-high plus 22, so give some credit to the C's deadline acquisition. Overall, over these first two games, with Mike Budenholzer's defensive game plan geared towards cutting off driving angles for Tatum and Brown, that's forced Boston to attempt a mind-boggling 93 three-point attempts over these first two games. They made 18 of 50 triples in Game 1, bouncing back to set the franchise record by making 20 of 43 from distance in Game 2. While Boston swept the Nets in the first round, over the four games, they only combined to beat them by 18 points in that series. Against Brooklyn, the Seas never came close to laying it on the Nets like they did to Milwaukee on Tuesday. They got up by 25 at the half, and with a massive surge in the late fourth quarter, they extended their lead back up to 23 with a dominant response, ultimately winning 109-86. This definitely swings momentum in my opinion, giving Boston had their best performance in a while, even without Marcus Smart. We'll see how the Bucks can respond without such an important piece in Chris Middleton. But who wins Game 3 of this heated second round battle as the series shifts to Cream City? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is The Flesh, who says Milwaukee's supporting cast is the X factor in their playoff hopes. Giannis will always be dominant and be a nightmare to opposing teams. The question is, can the role players step up consistently? Game 1 shows how capable they are. They need to do this every night. Holiday, Middleton, and the rest of the Bucks, apart from Giannis, suffer from inconsistency. This needs to change if they want to defend their title, but I believe they're capable, and they'll win in seven. Appreciate the best Hoopstock community on all of the internet for every answer. I hope you have a great one. Deflo signing off.